Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. It was a wrong decision. Texas authorities now admitting police should have engaged the 18-year-old gunman sooner. In the small town of Uvalde, grief is turning into anger as parents learn police waited nearly an hour to enter the classroom where 19 children and two teachers were shot and killed. We're also learning the gunman fired more than 100 times within the first four minutes of the attack and arrived with more than 1,600 rounds of ammunition. The door he used to enter the school was supposed to be locked but it had been propped open by a teacher minutes before the shooter arrived. Texas Governor Greg Abbott acknowledging he was given inaccurate information and vows to investigate every fact of the shooting. I was misled. I am livid about what happened. I was on this very stage two days ago, and I was telling the public information that had been told to me in a room just a few yards behind where we're located right now. I wrote down hand notes in detail about what everybody in that room told me in sequential order. NBC News now reporting the federal agents who were first to arrive were told by local police to wait and not enter the school. The agents then decided after 30 minutes not to wait any longer and enter the school to find the gunman. Here at home, a vigil was held to honor the lives of the 19 children and two teachers killed in the Uvalde school shooting. Our Megan Woods live in southwest Detroit tonight, Megan, a, an emotional night. Very emotional, heavy, uh, and symbolic. They met right here in front of a school, and there was singing, prayers in both Spanish and English, and the speakers were very clear. They're adding feet or action to those prayers. No child should experience that. Emotional pleas came from community leaders, parents, grandparents, and there were babies. Elected officials. A week and a half where black elders are not safe at the grocery store and Taiwanese Americans are not safe in a church fellowship hall and then children are not safe at their school. Community activists like Cindy Garcia are who organized this vigil. We want people to not forget these faces. These were the children that asked for help and didn't get it. Because even though Uvalde, Texas is more than a thousand miles away, she says the pain is all the same. But the question is, will this time be any different? I don't know, because quite frankly, I would have thought Newtown was different. I would have thought Parkland was different. I would have thought Caliban was different. And Congresswoman Debbie Dingell says everyone should be a part of the solution. Don't look to your elected officials only to get this fixed. Look to yourselves and your neighbors to stand up to hate. Fly high, children, fly high. Organizers say this event wasn't just to uh, pay tribute to the 21 that were killed, but also to make sure their neighbors know and meet their elected officials and know what those elected officials are doing about gun safety and also for those neighbors to know how they can take action themselves. Live in Southwest Detroit, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Original, really emotional night there, Megan. We appreciate your story. And we've seen these last few days how the Oxford community has been coming together to show support to those in Uvalde. And in fact, now a recent Oxford High School graduate is raising money to those impacted in Uvalde. Hannah Gibbons designed this shirt that is now available to buy online. All the proceeds of the shirt is going to benefit the staff and students of Robb Elementary. And we have posted uh, the way to purchase the shirt at clickondetroit.com. Oh, really nice. Yeah. All right, a big Friday night crowd was expected, but the Tigers game ended up being postponed about yeah. 30 minutes before first pitch. Uh, Andrew's here. What we expect, though, for the rest of the night is we head into a steamy Memorial Day weekend here, right? That's right. Steamy indeed with some higher temperatures, but also drier conditions. Let's take a look back earlier this evening at Comerica Park with the power of Storm Tracker 4. You can get right in down the street level. You can even see the outfield and the infield of Comerica Park earlier this evening. Pay attention to the clock here. 525 when you join us on for Local 4 News at 5. We had some light rain around, but that was it. Then some light rain right on top of Comerica Park at 610, an hour before the first pitch. Then a few minutes later at 620, some heavy rain over the ballpark, but then became lighter just before seven o'clock. And by first pitch, it was all gone.
Let's take a look at what's happening now. We are still rain free for the most part here in downtown Detroit, minus a sprinkle or two you can see here in light green. Some heavier rain down to our south that stays there south of I-94 as it moves across Monroe County. And behind that, drier conditions. We're looking at loads of sunshine coming back as early as tomorrow. Some rain at last report just a few moments ago over at Metro Airport with 57 degrees. Overnight, though, it does get drier and we stay in the 50s for the most part. It's 61 in Howell, but you'll see low and middle 50s by dawn and drier conditions as well when the sun rises on Saturday. We'll talk about where temperatures go from here and how high they get through Memorial Day coming up. All right, speaking of Memorial Day, those planning to go to Monday's Memorial Day Parade in Royal Oak will notice some big differences from prior years. Several local veterans upset with the route that it was changed. They are now going to skip this year's parade. Jason Coltharp live in Royal Oak tonight at the Veterans War Memorial with what went wrong here, Jason. Well, the, a couple things people need to keep in mind as they watch this story. One, veterans here in Royal Oak have been at odds with city officials over the last couple of years specifically about the war memorial and also the head of the American Legion here just ran for mayor and lost. Now he says this is not political, but he and other veterans frankly feel they're being disrespected here. I'm known as Parade Willie. Even though John Willie Williams likes to say it's about the cause, not the applause, he does love a parade where veterans get their just due. Let's get our flags, our banners, and let them know that there's veterans out there that are proud to be veterans, and we're proud to be involved with your community. But this year, the American Legion, the VFW, and the Disabled American Veterans have all opted to not participate in Royal Oaks Memorial Day Parade. With Main Street a construction mess, the route became shorter and curvier, which made it more difficult for the Legion's float, on which almost two dozen disabled vets ride. And they have to pull off after a few blocks and they're not be able to be in this parade to see the spectators and have spectators see them. So it just doesn't work for us. Our input has been diminished tremendously, you know, across the last few years. And, and we don't like it. Legion Commander Tom Roth says it's not just the parade route, but also the city and the police department's unwillingness to discuss an alternate route with them. Frankly, we know it's not about us, it's not about the city, it's not about anything. It's about those that have given the ultimate sacrifice, and we just want to be part of that. Um, but the parade part just became too much of a mess. And that's why those groups that are skipping the parade will be here at the memorial for the ceremony part of things on Monday. And the city did tell me tonight that they felt like this alternate route would be suitable for any vehicles, including floats. Uh, it's obviously different, but they felt it was certainly suitable. Uh, and they also say they reached out to groups that may have had members who have mobility issues and offered them transportation if need be. The one thing both sides do agree on, the focus, they say this coming Memorial Day should be on the 188 Royal Oakers who went off to war and never returned home. In Royal Oak tonight, Jason Colt of Local 4. Yeah, really tough. All right, Jason. Birmingham Public Schools revealing tonight how many teachers it's going to lay off to address their budget shortfall. Earlier this year, the district announced a $14.3 million shortfall, citing declining enrollment. The district now says it must reduce its staff by 10%. That's 105 full-time positions, including 46 teachers. Those being laid off were expected to be told by the end of this week. Businessman Perry Johnson is now suing to try to get back on that August primary ballot. Perry, along with James Craig and three others running for governor for the GOP nomination, were disqualified from the ballot because of a lack of valid petition signatures. Well, Johnson is now asking the state appeals court to order the board of state canvassers to put him on the ballot. Johnson claims the bureau did not examine every line of the petitions. The appeals court is expected to make a decision next week. Took 42 minutes for the city of Dearborn to run out of 500 cans of baby formula at today's giveaway event. The line grew to more than 100 cars outside the Ford Community and Performing Arts Center for the drive through event, which was held as new data shows 70% of baby formula products were out of stock last week. Well, I'm a grandma. It's for my daughter, and she's sick, so um, it's hard. I go every day searching for Walgreens, Kroger's. The city hopes the formula shortage improves in the coming days, but if not, we'll be holding another giveaway event in the near future. And we'll let you know as soon as we know when yeah. that will be.